Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's presentation. Um, we're going to get started right away. My name is Marty Ballantyne. I'm a program officer with the Explore and Create program, and I work primarily with media artists. Over to my colleagues who are co-presenting with me today. Hello, everyone. Uh, glad to be here. My name is Sean Devine. I am also a program officer in Explore and Create, and I work primarily with theater artists and organizations. And hello, my name is Jen McCarroll. I'm a program officer in Explore and Create as well, and I work primarily with uh, music and sound artists. Uh, today's presentation is approximately 30 minutes long, and we are going to go over the basics of the Explore and Create program. Uh, contact information will be provided at the end if you have any questions. The Canada Council for the Arts acknowledges the land on which our offices are located and from where I am speaking to you today is the unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation, whose presence here reaches back to time immemorial. The Council recognizes the Algonquins as the customary keepers and defenders of the Ottawa River watershed and its tributaries. We honor their long history of welcoming many nations to this beautiful territory and uphold and uplift the voice and values of our host nation. Further, the Council respects and affirms the inherent and treaty rights of all Indigenous peoples across this land. The Council has and will continue to honor the commitments to self-determination and sovereignty we have made to Indigenous nations and peoples. The Council acknowledges the historical oppression of lands, cultures, and the original peoples in what we now know as Canada, and fervently believes the arts contribute to the healing and decolonizing journey we all share together. I would also like to recognize the unprecedented moment that we are all experiencing. The pandemic has fundamentally changed our lives in almost every way. We've all had to make sacrifices and learn as we go, and we very much appreciate being with you today and wish you all good health and courage during this challenging time. Now, the objective of this session is to provide high level information about the program and how to apply in order to strengthen your next applications for upcoming cutoff dates of both the research and creation and concept to realization components of Explore and Create. We will provide information about assessment criteria, how decisions are made, some tips for your application and answer the following frequently asked questions. What is the difference between research and creation and concept to realization? What is a cutoff date and what are application limits? Now, first, we have some information about new investment for the arts sector. The Canada Council for the Arts recently announced that it has received an additional federal investment of $116.5 million to support artists and stimulate employment in the arts sector. The Council is investing this one-time additional funding in its Explore and Create program and in a new initiative called Digital Now. In tandem with the federal investment, additional council funding will be directed to creating, knowing and sharing the arts and cultures of First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples, or CKS. 66 million will be invested in the Explore and Create program. These components support individual artists, arts groups and arts organizations to undertake research, development, creation and production projects. The program supports a wide range of artists and projects, including projects proposed by new and early career artists. Digital Now is a new one-time digital innovation initiative to enable artistic groups, collectives, and organizations to adapt existing works and or create new ones to be shared virtually with the public. This funding is meant to stimulate job creation within the arts sector and ensure that artists and arts organizations can continue to create work and deliver their programming and activities virtually while the physical distancing, travel restrictions and other public health measures related to the COVID-19 pandemic are ongoing. Now it's important to note this opportunity is not open to individuals. The additional funding in creating, knowing and sharing will be delivered through the short term projects and long term projects components during the 2021-22 fiscal year. CKS is a standalone program designed with an indigenous approach. It has a suite of grant components which fund all activities except touring that are funded in the other programs, as well as other activities and applicant types that may not be eligible 
elsewhere at Council. The program supports First Nations, Inuit and Métis individuals, groups, collectives, and organizations working in any combination of contemporary, customary, and traditional artistic and cultural practices. We encourage artists to continue to create and work during the pandemic. The Council's programs are flexible and open to new models and innovative ways of sharing work safely with audiences. Over to you, Sean. All right, thank you, Marty. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the Explore and Create program as a whole, and then I'm going to focus more specifically on the two components called research and creation and concept to realization. The goal of the Explore and Create program is to advance Canadian artistic practice by encouraging artists to investigate creative processes and take risks that lead to the development of unique works destined to connect with the public. Explore and Create supports the research, development, creation and production of work, as well as professional development for artists. Now let's take a look at the two specific grant components. The research and creation component of Explore and Create supports the initial stages of the creative process. This is where Canadian artists, artistic groups and arts organizations can apply to develop and make creative work. These are grants that support that provide support for creative research, project creation and project development. The concept to realization component of Explore and Create supports the full creative cycle from the initial idea straight through to presentation at any stage of the creative continuum. This is where Canadian artists, groups and organizations can apply to this component for projects that include creation, but which also must include presentation and or production. In other words, these are grants that provide support for artistic research, creation and project development, but must also include a public component, including remounts, production, post-production and presentation. Now let's take a look at the, three, the assessment criteria for these grants and how decisions are made. Peer assessment is fundamental to Council's decision making process. Eligible applications are assessed by peer assessors, artists from across Canada with expertise in the art sector. These peer assessors are responsible for reviewing all of the applications and scoring those applications based on our assessment criteria. The evaluation of applications is based not only on the Explore and Create programs objectives, but also the assessment criteria that are listed in the published guidelines for each component. There are three assessment criteria categories for the two components we're focusing on here today, and it's important that you consider and address each of these criteria when you are preparing your application. The first assessment criteria is artistic merit, which is worth 50% of the total score. As you'll see in the guidelines, your project's artistic merit score is based on three items. The artistic rationale for your project, the artistic quality of your work, and the project's potential artistic outcomes. The grant application process is competitive. Therefore, the artistic rationale for the proposed project needs to be well articulated. It's important to support the ideas behind your project in order to help demonstrate its merit. For example, beyond a personal desire to work on this project, what is the creative drive behind it? What are you hoping to explore with this project? Why have you chosen this project? Why now? Why are you the person to do it? The artistic quality of the work, as demonstrated by the project description and the attached support material, must be convincing in order to stand out from the other applications in the competition. We'll talk about support material in just a moment. Then, the potential artistic outcomes as articulated in the application form and required documents must provide peer assessors with a clear enough understanding or impression of the completed project. So, what is support material? Support material is written, visual, or audio documentation of your creative work. The quality of the audio, visual, or related supporting materials should highlight the quality of the work proposed. 
don't submit support material that exceeds recommended guidelines. You should note that peer assessors are advised to spend no more than 10 minutes reviewing the support material in a project grant. Therefore, it's the applicant's responsibility to select a concise example of work that will best support the application. Here are some general tips for support material. You may choose to include earlier work or activities to provide a context for your application. You want to support you want to choose support material that paints a clear picture of your work, but also that demonstrates your capabilities as an artist. You may wish to include samples of the work in progress or the work being produced if possible. You also want to upload your support material in the order you want them seen. When artistic merit is being assessed, focus on your artistic work, not on media or press clips or promotional videos. You can also include the work or activities of your other key artists or collaborators. You might want to include bios or resumes of the members of your artistic team, as well as letters of support. When you are selecting support material, you want to submit high quality material. For example, digital uh, digital images with minimal background where the work can be clearly seen, clear readable scans of writing samples or audio samples without too much background noise. Also, test your support material before you submit it to ensure that it's formatted correctly. And if your support material has passwords, for example, with a video, Make sure you don't change the passwords until after you receive your results or your result letter to make sure that the jury has a chance to see it. Also, it's a good idea to upload your support material a few days in advance of the application cutoff date just to make sure that there are no last minute technical issues. So that was the artistic merit assessment criteria. The second assessment criteria is impact, which counts for 30% of your total score. Make sure you explain how the proposed project will contribute to your or your group's artistic development. The potential of the project to advance artistic practice must be clearly articulated. How are you pushing your practice with this project? What are you doing differently? Are you exploring new materials, new genres, new concepts? How will your project advance artistic practice more widely beyond your own individual practice? Will it be contributing to an existing canon? Will it be filling a gap? Are you taking an exploration of genre into a new direction? And then for the concept to realization component only, there's another element of impact, which is the project's potential to build public interest in and knowledge of your artistic practice. And this must be clear and compelling in your application. Make sure that your project's reach and accessibility to a variety of audiences and communities is sufficiently evident. For example, what audiences, communities, artists, groups or organizations will you reach with your project? How will you connect with them? What supports or communities will be available to you by presenting the work in this proposed context? And then the third and final assessment criteria is feasibility, which counts for 20% of the total score. Applications that stand out are often the ones where the applicant convincingly demonstrates their capacity to successfully, to successfully undertake the project. And this can be conveyed in any number of ways, including a realistic work plan that outlines key steps, resumes or bios demonstrating you and your team's experience, and of course, a solid budget. Make sure to demonstrate your ability to provide adequate and safe working conditions for yourself and those involved with your project. This question in the application is applicable if your project includes other artists, community members, or collaborators, and if your project poses obvious physical, mental health, and safety concerns. In terms of the budget, the expenses proposed in your budget must match the revenues listed. This means that if your project costs add up to more than what you're asking for in the grant, you must list how you will cover the remainder of those costs with other revenues. You may list some of the revenues as pending and some of them as confirmed, but please do note that a large amount of pending revenues in your budget could negatively affect your feasibility score. And one general note on budgets, 
don't feel pressure to fill in all the lines of the budget. The form itself was designed to address all kinds of work in all disciplines, and so some of those budget lines won't apply to you and your work. Just look for the lines that most logically apply to your project and fill those in. And of course, you can always clarify in the budget notes column anything that you think is unclear. Over to my colleague. Thank you, Sean. Um, I will talk a little bit about the current assessment context, meaning uh, other uh, points of discussion or, or context for these discussions that happen um, during the assessment. Uh, first being travel and public presentations in the age of COVID. Uh, so the grant application forms contain the following question. If your project includes travel, a group activity, an in-person event, and or other gathering, describe what precautions you are taking to meet Government of Canada recommendations and public health guidelines. How could you modify your plans if the project is impacted by COVID-19? So if your project involves travel or public interactions in any way, uh, make sure you describe how you're adhering to national and provincial health guidelines and ensure that you have a plan B in case those restrictions change, which they are all the time. Uh, and this will be taken into account while evaluating the feasibility of your project, which if you recall uh, is one of the assessment criteria that uh, Sean mentioned. Another important point is uh, that on cultural appropriation. So the issue of cultural appropriation is increasingly debated in the fields of artistic creation. Uh, there are specific questions touching on cultural appropriation in both program components. So it's important to answer them, but only if you if that's relevant to your specific project. Uh, if you choose to answer the question, make sure that you do so in an informed and sensitive manner. A few things to consider when deciding whether your project touches on cultural appropriation uh, are whose story are you telling uh, in your work? What is your relationship to the themes or subject matter uh, and the, or the practices involved in the project? Uh, have you demonstrated respectful efforts to engage with artists or other members of Indigenous or other affected cultural communities? Have you factored into your budget plans to fairly compensate your mentors or consultants for their work? This also applies to any project involving uh, or touching on any traditional knowledge, linguistic or cultural intellectual property from any culture or traditions other than your own. Uh, more on that, the same informed sensitive approach should be demonstrated for any projects touching on social justice issues of any kind as well, especially if they're not part of your own lived experience. Uh, cultural appropriation or insensi insensitivity uh, will not be a criterion for eligibility of your project, but it can affect the assessment outcome of the application. So always keep in mind that you are writing for a committee of your peers. So these are artists who are embedded in the same communities as you uh, with many of the same preoccupations. Peer assessment is a human process in the end, and while assessors are charged to score applications by the component assessment criteria and not to base their evaluations on personal opinion or outside issues, they're also charged with being sensitive to cultural appropriation and, uh, and the equality of access for all communities. Next, we'll go on to some application tips. Uh, so, our next application cutoff dates are April 8th, 2021 and October 6th, 2021. And some important tips to help you with your next application uh, are always preview the application well in advance of any cutoff date or application deadlines. This will help you understand what is needed and you can start gathering those uh, materials well in advance. If you don't think your project or activity plans will be ready by a cutoff date or application deadline, then it may be wise to wait until the next one. Uh, that way you'll have a stronger application. Uh, you can choose to ask someone who has not read your application to read it and give you constructive criticism, or sometimes I uh, recommend that they you ask that they explain your project back to you to make sure that your important points are getting across. Uh, do not start filling out your form on the day before the cutoff date or the application deadline. Really take the time to do it properly and plan your application to make sure that you're presenting a cohesive package. You want to provide relevant background information, so don't presume that the peer assessors are familiar with your work or the nature or terminology of your field of practice. So the CV that you do upload with your uh, profile does get uh, submitted with your application, so make sure that that is up to date. 
make sure that everyone named in your proposal is aware and agrees to be included. Write in your own voice, not someone else's or what you think the proposal should sound like or what you think that the assessors want to hear. Avoid writing in the third person uh, and just a more personal approach is always best. Be clear, concise and specific. Uh, don't try to be universal because there is great power to specificity. And be as concrete as possible about the dates and locations of your project as well. And then, of course, before you hit submit, check your application for spelling mistakes and grammatical errors. Uh, for application assistance, so this is uh, individual applicants who are deaf and or have disabilities, including people living with mental illness and deaf and disability arts groups may apply for funds to cover disability related supports and services required to complete the application or and or complete the project funded through a Canada Council program. So details and application forms for access support are found within each specific granting program on the website. On to Marty for some frequently asked questions. Thanks, Jen. So the first of the uh, frequently asked questions that we want to discuss is what is the difference between research and creation and concept to realization? It's a very common question. Um, if the aim of your project is to, for example, begin the process of an artistic investigation, uh, perhaps you want to spend time in the studio experimenting and working. You may want to travel and do research about a topic that you wish to develop further. Um, you might just want to uh, hunker down and write for a period of time um, or work through artistic challenges and take some risks in your practice. Then research and creation is the best component to sub support this work. Uh, in res research and creation, you can apply for subsistence, studio rental, childcare, travel costs, costs for materials and supplies, costs relating to research, mentorship, consultation, and any preliminary costs that are directly related to the program of work that you propose in your application. If, on the other hand, you have been invited to present your work to the public in some way, or are seeking funds to produce the final version of a film, uh, the recording of music, the mounting or remount of a theater production, or a visual arts exhibition, or any other production costs related to the project's final presentation, then you would apply for concept to realization. That way you can apply for all of the above costs included in research and creation, plus the costs involved in bringing the work to its final stages of completion and presentation. Now, the strength of the project's impact on a defined public and the support of a presenter is part of the assessment criteria for this component. Uh, please note as well that there has been a recent update to guidelines adding new eligible costs, including child or dependent care costs, if required to complete the activity and equipment purchases required specifically for the activity. Over to you, Sean. All right, thank you, Marty. Uh, so our second question, what is a cutoff date? So what is that? Research and creation and concept realization components, they each have apply any time policies for submitting your application, not application deadlines. You may have noticed uh, just a minute ago that my colleague Jen referred to a cutoff date of April 8th, which is coming up next week, and after that a cutoff date of October the 6th. What this means is that any grant submitted between now and April the 8th will be put into the competition that closes or cuts off on April 8th. Any grant that is submitted after April 8th will be put into the competition that closes or cuts off October in October 6th. And depending on which competition you're put into, that determines when you get your grant results. So you can apply any time as long as it is before the start date of your project. In other words, only expenses incurred after you submit your application are eligible for funding. Your project can be well underway or even completed prior to receiving your grant notification. This does mean that you take the risk of not receiving the funding for the activity you undertake. However, this does also allow artists more flexibility as to when to apply. If you choose to begin your project prior to receiving notification of your results and your application is successful, you may absolutely apply the funds retroactively. And over to you, Jen, for our third question. Thank you, Sean. 
Third question is what are application limits? So individuals and groups may submit a maximum of three project grant applications to the Canada Council each application buffer year. Uh, so there are also exceptions to this and you should consult the website to see what programs don't count toward this three, uh, three project grant application limit. Um, so the application limits are based on the number of applications submitted in an application buffer year, which uh, runs from March 1st to the end of February each year, and not on the number of successful applications. So you want to be able to plan ahead for how many applications you wish to submit, taking into consideration these limits. Uh, it's also important to note that each program component has limits of their own on the number of applications you can submit in the buffer year. Uh, this information is published in the application guidelines of each component, which can be found on the right hand side of each component's website uh, or web page under resources. Uh, for the sake of today's presentation, research and creation and concept to realization each have a uh, application limit of two per buffer year. And once you've reached that maximum number of applications in a buffer year or in a component, uh, you can reapply again as of March 1st of the following year. All right, so that brings us to the end of our info session. Uh, on behalf of my colleagues, thank you very much for attending. We very much look forward to receiving your applications and we definitely encourage you to review our guidelines and application forms ahead of time. And if you do have questions, and we're sure you do have questions, please feel free to contact us at the email you see on your screen there, which is exploreandcreate at canadacouncil.ca. And when we get your email, it will be forwarded to a program officer like myself or Marty or Jen or someone who is best able to respond to your specific question. If you have questions or if you're looking for information on our program called Creating, Knowing and Sharing, the Arts and Cultures of First Nations, Inuit and Métis Peoples, please contact Creating, Knowing and Sharing at CanadaCouncil.ca. If you'd like to know more about Digital Now, you can always look at the Digital Now section on our website, or you can send an email to digitalnow at canadacouncil.ca. And if you're looking for more information on how we make funding decisions, there is a document on our website called How We Make Funding Decisions. And um, just before we end off here, uh, if you have any comments or questions about our outreach presentation, please, we'd love to hear about that. So send an email to outreach at canadacouncil.ca. Thank you once more for participating. And on behalf of my colleagues at, and everyone at Council, we wish you to, to be kind, to be creative, and of course, to be safe. Thank you very much. <laughs>